It's time to mix things up a bit, literally, by letting chance decide which bourbons I blend together. Will we find a combo that's absolutely amazing? Will we ruin some of my favorite bourbons? I don't know what's gonna happen, but whatever does happen, it's gonna be a lot of fun. So let's get to it. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of The Bourbon Hutch, and thanks so much for joining me on this journey through the world of whiskey. So that's right, I am super, super excited to be launching another series for you guys, and this one's gonna be called Random Blends. So the premise of this series is pretty simple. I'm gonna spin this whiskey wheel, which has 14 slots. So each week I'm gonna put, you know, 14 different whiskeys or 14 different combinations of whiskeys on here to randomize it. We'll spin the wheel. It'll select different whiskeys for us at random. And then I will blend those together and see how they taste. Sometimes we'll just put two together and see how they taste. Maybe we'll get to three, four, even five and just get crazy with it and see how it goes. But my great hope for this series really is just that if something's super fun and different and entertaining for you guys, it's gonna keep me on my toes, both with just tasting and using my palate, but also just randomly selecting bourbons and whiskeys that I'd never put together for me to put together. Of course, that could mean that, you know, some of my favorites like the Maker's Mark special releases, wood finishing things, end up going with some of my least favorites. And that could be a little bit tragic or sad, but it'll also sometimes lead to really interesting and unique blends. And that's what I'm so, so excited for. So without further ado, let us get into our first random blend. Today, we're just gonna put two together and see how they taste. There's 14 up here, a good mix of some of my favorites, some ones that I think are decent, some that are not my favorite, Basically just gonna be an interesting combo here. So let's get into it. Cheers, everybody. All right, our first is a heavy hitter for sure. Jack Daniels single barrel barrel proof. So we've got this 130 proof whiskey gonna be in the mix. All right, what is next? Second bourbon or rye whiskey that's gonna go in this blend is... Bell Mead Reserve. Okay, so we've got some two heavy hitters here. We've got a high rye bourbon now added to the mix, 108 proof. I'm gonna go get the two whiskeys, put them together, and then we'll wait a little bit and let them sort of mingle, and then we'll taste. So let's get to it. All right, everybody. Now we've got our two whiskeys out here. We've got the Jack Daniels, which is obviously a Tennessee whiskey you know, fulfills all the requirements for bourbon. So we can basically call it a bourbon if we want. And then we've got the Bell Mead Reserve bourbon here. Um, as I pour these, I got two Glencairns here. I'm just gonna pour it in in equal parts basically, and then combine into one glass. Um, we are looking at Bell Mead Reserve here. So this is a high rye MGP sourced product. I just actually recently did a review on this. So if you wanna check that out, I'll try to link up here. Um, I believe this is 64% corn, 30% rye, and 6% malted barley. So very high rye. Age-wise, it's somewhere in that like seven to 11 year, kind of a big range for them. Um, this has just been recently pulled out of the national market. So super glad to have a bottle of it. Then we've got the Jack Daniels single barrel barrel proof, which is like really high corn. So 80% corn. I think it's 12% rye and 8% malted barley. Those could be a little flipped, but um, lower rye here for sure. In terms of proof though, we are looking at the Jack Daniels at 130.4 proof for this particular batch. And then for the Bell Mead Reserve, this is 108.3 proof. Okay, so in terms of volume, we are pretty dang close, not gonna lie to you. This, uh, I think this Jack Daniels might have a little bit more, but not worth haggling about. So let's do our first blend here. We're gonna put Bell Mead Reserve and Jack Daniels Single Barrel Barrel Proof together as a blend. All right, I'll just sort of swirl this up, let them mingle, get some oxygen in there. Pretty healthy pour since we've got two things going together. 
I'll probably have to be sipping on this for the rest of the evening for sure. All right. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to let that sit for about 10 minutes. Let it really co-mingle together. We will come back and we will taste this totally random blend. All right, everybody, we are back and we have let this mingle for about 10 minutes now. I did a little bit of math and we are now looking at something that is 119.35 proof. Um, didn't do all the math on all the mash bills. Might do that later, might not, might be a little too much work, but we'll see. So for now, let's just get into the unique blend here, totally randomized by the whiskey wheel on the nose. Okay, interesting. It's very sweet. Um, obviously the Jack Daniels is usually this like darker, richer, caramel, brown sugar, creme brulee kind of feel to it for me. Um, and then the Bell Mead is much more rye forward, fresh, some darker caramels underneath, but really I also get this like piney wintergreen note on there. But what I'm getting here is like, almost like banana and cherry and vanilla, but very candy sweet. It's almost like the banana of the Jack Daniels and the cherry of the Bell Mead have married into this like banana runt cherry sweetness. I don't get too much of the rye from the Bell Mead, but it's there a little bit underneath. There's good brown sugar, that's for sure. And there's a good ethanol hit to it. Both of these have a, a good ethanol presence on the nose, um, just on their own. So that's still staying there. But man, what's really dominating is this cherry, banana, vanilla note. Maybe a little like baking spices and, and cinnamon, but super interesting that that cher cherry and banana have just so combined into this candy sweetness. Let's see how it is on the palate here. Super intrigued now. Cheers, everybody. Okay, wow. Super interesting there. Um, first thing I noticed was heck of a lot of brown sugar. Both of these have that in spades for sure. I think the Jack Daniels really is just a brown sugar bomb for me. So that's carrying through really nicely. There's good cherry um, and good banana. Sort of that laffy taffy banana runt sweetness is sticking around. Um, there's less of an ethanol presence or a spike or a punch than the Jack Daniels on its own has. So the I think the Bell Mead has sort of tamed it a little bit. There's a good little bit of rye spice that probably is coming from the Bell Mead. Um, what lingers on the palate is this almost like cherry lollipop, banana candy sweetness. And then overall there is like vanilla in there. I will say what sort of happened was it was, it was this like blooming experience. Front of the palate was pretty sweet middle was brown sugar and spice and then it faded very quickly like i think maybe these two cutting against each other there the finish gets shortened a little bit but we'll go back in now for a second sip and focus on if we can pick out any new flavors um, and see how it's developing so on the nose yeah it's it's taming itself a little bit in the ethanol department which is good but again, I'm just, I'm getting this like overwhelming amount of candy sweetness. Oh, I think I got a little bit of that pine or winter green there. But it's like, it's so sugary. It's so brown sugary and candy sugars. Um, if you've ever had like a pixie stick or um, ring pop, it's kind of that like just straight up candy sugar smell. Yeah, staying true to that. Let's get back into the palate. Cheers again.
Hmm. Okay, man. So that experience was, I think, even better than the first sip. Um, the richness and darkness of the brown sugar got paired now with this nice, like, barrel spice that came through there. So the barrel char, barrel spice, and brown sugar really took center stage, front stage on that sip. Then it fades nicely into a lingering heat and a cherry vanilla touch of banana sweetness that lingers. There is good baking spices um, in there too, maybe a little bit of cinnamon, um, maybe like a nutmeg or something that the Bellmead might be bringing to the table, but it's actually really, really quite good. Um, I do think, again, the finish, the finish in terms of flavor punch fades a little bit quickly, um, but otherwise, this is such an interesting combo. I think what's really cool about it is that the like brown sugar creme brulee nature of the Jack Daniels with that banana and the sort of fruitier, even like more floral, but certainly lots of fruit from the Bell Mead are now combining together. Cause I don't get that much fruit other than banana on the Jack Daniels. I don't get that much cherry. So anyway, I mean, it's just super interesting that the sort of brown sugar, baking spice nature of both of these combines well. But this Bell Mead brings some really nice fruit to it. And the Jack Daniels brings that extra barrel char, barrel spice kick. Really, really good. We'll have to see at the end, you know, if I think they're, it's better than each of these individually or one of them individually. But right now I'm just enjoying it. So let's go back in for a third sip and evaluate the finish more fully here. Cheers, everybody. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Okay. Something I'm noticing now is that there's a little bit more of a, a sour tinge, which I get on the bell meat. I get like a sour green apple, like a nice juicy Granny Smith apple. That is coming through now on the finish. Um, as it's had more time to mingle, I'm sure that's it's kind of cohering a little bit. And it goes from this like blooming barrel char brown sugar experience with fading into this nice cherry banana sweetness and then finally finishing off with this like red apple, maybe green apple, a little bit more of a tart sourness that is coming through on the finish. Wow. Super interesting, super interesting blend. And it's sticking around now a little bit longer. Uh, at first, I feel like they were just competing and the finish was dropping out. And now it's that sourness is coming through, that little bit of tartness that keeps it lingering. Really nice. Okay, so the question is, do I think this blend here of Bellmead Reserve and Jack Daniels Single Barrel Barrel Proof is better than either of these bottles on their own? Um, I'd have to lean toward no, I mean, I'd have to do a, a blind three-way against each other to really evaluate. Um, but I think both of these bottles are really good on their own. And what this blend is, is interesting and different, but probably on the same level as each of them on their own. I'm really enjoying it. I, I think it's just a, a good combo, sort of the best of both worlds here. Um, they didn't necessarily compete against each other. They melded well together. And I would say that um, now that the finish is coming back a little bit more, I'd give this um, I'd give this a really solid like thumbs up. If you guys have both of these bottles, um, I would 100% recommend trying to combine them. I think the nice high rye fruitiness of the Bellmead and the sort of brown sugar, pure creme brulee nature of the Jack Daniels and the barrel spice there, they mix well together. All right, everybody, that is going to wrap up my first episode of Random Blends here with the whiskey wheel going. Um, I am so excited to see how this series develops. I'm so excited to test my palate more, combine different whiskeys and see how they go together. I'm excited for finding some really amazing blends that I think are totally better than the two bottles. A little less excited to see if some of those end up sort of being disappointing and making two great bottles worse or one great bottle gets mixed with a bad one. I don't know, anything could happen here, but it has been a lot of fun and I'm looking forward to more episodes. 
If you enjoyed this episode, if you like the idea of the whiskey wheel and random blends, hit that like button. If you're liking all the content coming out of the channel, hit that subscribe button. It really helps me know what specific kind of content to keep creating for you guys. So I think that about wraps it up here. Um, so excited to go on this journey of blending with you guys. And I can't wait to see what you guys all think of this idea. So until I see you guys again for another video, all I can say is keep drinking good whiskey, maybe try blending some of your own, and cheers.